Well, we can cross now to the capital and speak to our reporter there, Amélie Banron. And Amélie, yesterday you managed to speak by phone to the Prime Minister himself, that just hours after he survived that apparent assassination attempt. Um, I imagine it was quite a phone call. Just give us a sense of how he sounded and what he told you. Well, he first confirmed that, yes, what happened yesterday on Saturday uh, in, in Gonaïv was an attempt assassination against him. He told me that he knew the risk he was taking by making this trip, but it was for him out of question to just give in to what he described as an electoral blackmail uh, that is operated by people he calls terrorists. So you said this happened on Saturday morning in the city of Gonai, which is 150 kilometers north from Port-au-Prince. It's in this city that every January 1st, the National Day, is officially celebrated because it's where Haiti signed its in the Declaration of Independence in 1804. But this year, apart from the few, very few officials who went with the head of government, Gonai Cathedral was deserted during the traditional mass that is sung to mark the national holiday. And so as the official exit, the church. There were lots of shooting, many bursts of, of gunfire. All the officials, including the prime minister, had to flee in a rush. And according to photos that has been given to me by his office, we can see a, a bullet mark on the windshield of his uh, of the prime minister's car. And so, at the end of December, gang members from Gonaï, from this city, made it very clear that they would not accept that the prime minister visit the town, and, and they took action on Saturday. And Haiti is going through an immensely difficult time at the moment, Amelie. I mean, politically for one thing, but certainly also in terms of security, as you've been reporting on. And I know that's something that you also asked the prime minister about. You said, is it time now, given all of that, for more international support for Haiti in terms of perhaps even troops on the ground? What did the prime minister have to say to that? Well, IRS already has a very strong position on, on this issue. No, it doesn't want foreign policemen or foreign fo soldiers to help the Haitian forces to restore order. The prime minister's answer was that Haitian police will succeed and has to succeed in this task. So he is aware of the situation. But he told me that the, it is getting better, that a small victory has been made. Uh, and he assures that, indeed, it's not enough, that it's getting in the good direction. Uh, I can tell you that Haitian citizens surely do not have the same optimistic feeling that their prime minister has. Uh, there was a, a thousand kidnapping that haven't taken place uh, in 2021, and gangs haven't stopped fighting against each other. And still today, the main and only road that is between Port-au-Prince and the half south of the country is totally under the control of the armed band that really seems to operate with total impunity. Amélie Baron for us there in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Thank you very much.